God, you've been there for me every time I needed you. God, when I had no groceries, you showed up. God, when they were going to cut the lights off, you showed up. God, I need you to show up again. I need you to do something because Trayvon is out in them streets. God, keep him, keep him, keep him, keep him. All of a sudden, Trayvon gets arrested. Thank you, thank you. Why are you thanking him? Because he could be dead. Y'all don't hear me. Some folk know just because you get a bad call doesn't make it, it, it could have been a worse call. But because somebody prayed. How many people know God can intercept the devil's plan before it gets to you? Are there any people online and in this church that can say, I know for a fact God intercepted the devil's plan as it pertains to me. Now, if he ever deserves a loud hallelujah from you, now would be the time. Somebody in here understands that my private worship produces public power. Did you hear what I said? So worship is not a song. Worship is not a dance. Those are components of worship. But Jesus went up on the mountain. And he stayed in a posture of worship and prayer until he got the answers from the Father. And he did not move until he got what he needed. Some of us need to change our priorities so that our prayer and worship time is the most important part of our day, not getting up and going to a job. Because you wouldn't have the job if God didn't give it to you. You prepare more for your date than you do for your time with God. You brush your teeth, put on makeup and lipstick for your date and walk in there ashy, breath all hot. In the Old Testament, you had to literally, you had to guard what you wore, your mindset before you went into the Holy of Holies. The high priest had to be consecrated and if he had a wrong thought, he would die in the Holy of Holies. They had a, they had a rope around his ankle. Am I lying, Pastor Lamoris? If he, if he had the wrong thought in the presence of God, he died right there and they would drag him out. They would drag his dead body out because you can approach God wrong and not get out of his presence. That's why church folk need to quit playing with God. He's not playing with us. Oh, my Lord. Some of y'all like, well, I ain't praying no more because that you just get, thank you. I am not ready to pray. No, no, no. Jesus died. And the veil of the curtain was ripped from top to bottom, which means you and I in our broken state, in our immature state, in our, un, in our unfinished state can actually go to the Father with all of our humanity and all of our issues and all of our brokenness and all of our addictions and all of our drama. And we can literally lift our hands. And when, he, when we lift our hands, he sees Jesus. Oh, wake up the church, wake them up. When we lift our hands, God sees his son. When we accept the finished work of Jesus Christ, I don't have to walk in perfect. Jesus already did that. I walk in in his blood. Here's the thing about mountaintop worship, because everybody can worship on the mountaintop. It's easy to worship when everything's all good. It's easy to worship when you get the raise. It's easy to worship when you have everything you want. You got the house you want and this, that, and the third. But you know what? Mountaintop worship begins with valley experiences. Mountaintop worship begins with valley experiences, valley relationships, valley tears. Anybody ever cry tears in the valley? Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of I will know evil. How do you not fear evil if you're in the valley of the shadow of death? Well, because I'm a worshiper. And my worship has given me a perspective that no matter what I'm looking at, my God is bigger than that. My worship offers me a perspective of God and of my circumstance that makes God bigger than my circumstance. 
Weren't y'all just singing a song? Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. Let's lay down our crowns and lift up his name. Bum, bum, bum. Let's do it together. <laughs> Magnify the Lord with me. Hold on. He is the omnipresent God. He's the omniscient God. So how can you magnify a God that's already bigger than big? Anybody ever used a magnifying glass? How do you magnify a God that's bigger than the glass you hold? The words magnify means to make him bigger than we've made him. Make him as big as he actually is. When you, you can't magnify God because he's already the biggest. He's already the best. You can't say, God, I make you perfect. You can't make him nothing. He's already perfect. You can't make him perfecter. He's not the bestest. He is the preeminent one. He is the holy one. He is the awesome one. The magnification of God means it's not that I'm magnifying God. I'm letting all of my problems actually know you're smaller than the God I'm talking to. I'm only talking to worshipers. Carnal people not going to get this word. But mountaintop worship starts with valley experiences. If you haven't gone through hell, if you haven't been in the valley, then your worship has not been tested. There are some people who have very, very small worship muscles because you only been lifting weight in good times. But some of us got a six pack in tears. Some of us been bench pressing demons for years. Some of us have been in the valley for the longest time just got free. So my muscles have been trained in dark places. My spiritual disciplines were forged in fires that you will, I hope you never go through what I went through to get the oil I got. Do you hear what I'm saying? Am I talking to somebody? I'm talking to the people that have been through something. So I'm not worshiping from a carnal surface place. When I lift my hands, I lift my hands knowing that God is a keeper. God is a healer. God's a restorer. God's a provider. God is... I need somebody other than me to shout, God is. And then give him a 10-second praise break. I'm looking for some trench worshipers. Any soldiers in here? I heard about trench warfare. Trench warfare is when you get in the dirt, you get in the mud. You need some people that'll get in the mud with you. I need some trench worshipers. It's easy to worship when we're on the mountaintop, but you're not qualified to stand on the mountaintop with me if you didn't get in the trenches with me. Everybody wanna come once the battle is over. No, 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 I want the ones that'll battle with me. I want the ones that'll pray with me. Look at somebody say, will you pray with me? When I'm going through it, will you stand with me? Or are you only going to show up after the battle is over and I'm giving out prizes? No, no, no. The guys that I run with, I've been running with for some years. Pray for me in the trenches. Don't stand on a podium with me if you didn't sit in the trenches with me. Public victory is often the result of private worship. Well, pastor, I worship all the time. Keep your words of worship if your life don't line up. Got real quiet. Keep your shout if you're going to cuss me out after. Yeah, I don't want you to shout and then cuss me out because that's not a real good witness. Refrain from all of your histrionics and jumping up and down if you're going to gossip about me after. Don't give me front-facing public honor, but dishonor me when I turn my head. I want to look at a couple people so bad, but I won't. I'm going to just look right up in the... 
I don't want nobody to think I'm talking about. I am talking about you, but I'm not going to look at you. <laughs> Worship is not a moment. It's not what you do at the beginning of service. Worship is the posture with which you live your life. Write this down. Real simple today. My life is my worship. It's not the song I sing. It's not the offering I give. It's the life I live. Jesus lived his worship. His entire life was an offering to the Father. We get lost thinking that worship is a part of our life and we get to have some of our own choices and this, that, and the third. The truth is you do, you have free will. But for those of us who understand what God is requiring, then we know that worship is not something we do on Sunday mornings. It's the way we live our life every day. The posture of my life is my worship. Yeah. Well, pastor, I don't, what does that mean? I don't, I don't know what that means. That means you've got to do what you were created to do. You need to, to read Psalm 148. You got to go read it on your own. Psalm 148, all of the heavens declare the glory of God. Psalm 148, y'all don't, just leave me alone because I, I really want to shout, but but uh, my time is getting away from, no, no, you know what? I, I'll shout at the house. You understand what I'm saying? Because I'm going to teach you by example the same thing I'm saying. Because if I only shout here, if I only clap here, if I only do it here, then I'm actually probably a part of it is because I'm doing that in front of y'all or because it's religious or because it's expected. But the reality is if I'm not worshiping in the car, if I'm not worshiping at the house, because it ain't like the devils are going to be like, well, he worshiped at church, so I'm going to leave him alone on Tuesday. No, that fool going to show up, so I better have some worship. I better have an access point to God. So my posture needs to be one of humility and availability to God, regardless of the time. I love Psalm 148. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the heights. Praise him all his angels. Praise him all his hosts. Praise him sun and moon. Praise him all you stars of light. Praise him you heaven of heavens and you waters above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord. Y'all think that y'all are the only ones that can worship. Jesus said, you know, if y'all get quiet, some of y'all don't realize that he actually meant actual rocks on the side of a mountain will open their mouths and begin to bless God. Well, how can that happen? Well, God created them. So anything he creates has to honor him. When trees go back and forth in the breeze, they're praising him. When lightning strikes at his command, it's praising him. When the hail hits the ground at his command, it's praising him. When the birds sing their morning song, they're praising him. When, when, when the lion roars in the jungle, it's praising God. You need to understand, when it says, let everything that hath breath praise the Lord, everything. It even says, all you sea creatures praise him. That means when the whale gives its song, mm, the whale is praising God. You need to understand that everything praises God. The only thing that has a choice to praise is you and me. Everything else has to praise him. We get to praise. My worship is not what I do on Sundays. My worship is the life I live every day. How can you worship God? You can worship God by being everything he created you to be. It's real quiet. You're like, well, what does that mean? That means be the best professor, the best mechanic. What do you do? What do you, talk to me, what do you do? What do you do? You're a chef. So then you can't say that you serving God, but your chef skills is lacking and you don't know how to season no salmon. You need to have the best food, but also the best presentation because the God who created you gave you creativity. So it ain't just that you cook it, you know how to plate it right to make it appealing to my eye. But then 
because you are a daughter of the king, he puts his oil on top of your gift, which means your food has a different something and your heart has a different something. So I don't come to your restaurant just because the food is good, but it's something about you. I need to help somebody in here. You, you want to really take your worship to the next level? Be excellent at your job. You really want to take your worship to the next level? Be excellent in school, young man, young lady. Get straight A's. And when they ask you why, because I was created in the image of my father. And my father doesn't make mediocre things. So even though a C plus would be acceptable for this physics quiz, I couldn't just do a C plus because God didn't give me a C plus mind. He gave me an A plus plus mind. And so I'm going to go ahead and give him my best. I'm going to max out my gift. I want to talk to some gifted people in here. God is getting ready to put you in rooms that you could not pay for. And you need to walk in there like you. You know who your father is. That way you don't walk in with your eyes wide open talking about, ooh, look who's over there. No, look who just walked in. I walked in, and I walked in under the anointing of my father. And because I know who I am in him, I know when I walk in the room, I don't need the room. The room needs. I need you to high five three people. Tell them max out, max out, max out. Put it in the chat feed, max out. All your gifts, max out. Find three more people, I'm closing. Max out. Tell them max out. Max out, Jordan. Max out. Max out. Do everything you were created to do. You wanna rap, max out. You wanna sing, max out. You an MC, max out. Go ahead, do the Grammys, the Oscars, the Tonys, the Emmys. Do it all, max out. Be excellent at what you do. You an educator, max out. It's real quiet. Jesus worshiped on the mountaintop. It gave him power in the valley. Mountaintop worship. Jesus was walking on the sea. And I'm closing. Jesus was praying. He sent them. He went to the mountain to pray. When he came down, they were in the middle of the sea rowing, the wind was against them. Jesus was on the seashore. Now we know that he has power because there's another point where he was on the boat sleeping. He got up and said, peace be still. What happened? What happened? Wind and waves obeyed. Thank you, sir. The wind and waves obeyed. So how come he didn't say nothing this time? How come he let him struggle? Stop getting mad because God allows struggle in your life. He's actually, he's allowing it so he can show up in it. Don't ask the Lord to deliver you from it. Lord, reveal yourself in it. Oh, this is, this is, this is good. Now, I don't want deliverance from it. Show me who you are in it. So what did Jesus do? Instead of, he could have spoken from the shore, peace, be still. And all of a sudden, they would have immediately had the ability to finish in their own power. They missed it, Pastor Charles. The reason why God's not letting you finish is because he can't let you think you delivered yourself. What God's about to release this week, it was him that did it, not anybody else. I think somebody caught it because I just prophesied. I threw a sneaky prophecy. What God's about to bring effective tomorrow morning, that God did that. Nobody else did that. You, you didn't have enough strength. Watch this. All of them were rowing, and all of them together couldn't get it done. Here comes Jesus. Just walking, just walking in the middle of the night they think it's a ghost they start screaming they going crazy and he's like yo chill chill cheer up yo it's me he gets to them in the middle of the thing that they were collectively unable to get past and he walks up on them and then he says all right that's enough of all of this 
and everything that was against them had to bow down. Why did he do that? I just came from the mountain. I got power. Mountaintop worship is when you plug in and when you finished, you on full. This is why you got to be careful who you let have access to your battery. How many times have you said, they drained me? God says in this season, I don't want people draining you. Watch this. Those who were draining you were actually training you. What it's letting you know is that you didn't have enough capacity in yourself. And some of the people you've been carrying were not your assignment. And some of the stuff you were carrying was not your assignment. The only way you're going to know what your assignment is and to stay in alignment is when you're at the top of the mountain alone with God in worship. Quiet, committed, postured worship. You and God, nobody else, not your phone, not your friends, not your social media, just you and God. And if you didn't like what I said about social media, that's a spirit, and you should check that thing at the altar because you got offended because the dopamine in your head makes you think that a like from a stranger is more important than the pleasure of God on your life. I haven't been on social media in, what, five months, and I'm more free than I've ever been in my life. If I choose to get on there, it'll be my choice, but it don't I don't worship at the altar of somebody else liking my post, hoping that they validate me. My validation comes from my Father. He's the only reason I stand here right now. It's in Him I live and move and have my being. I got one God. And he's in heaven. I'm trying to help somebody. Don't you make people your God. Don't you make a job your God. Don't you make likes and applause and acceptance your God. Because the moment you make them your God, then you got to worship at their altar. It's real quiet in here. They don't like that. I know my church. I love y'all. I know that you right now, scooching your cheeks towards the edge of the seat to get to your car. But before you do, we're going to stand together. After whose baby you got? You just in the middle of the surgery, just went and got a random baby and just holding them? Good, get your baby fix. Amen. Because I am 73. Now, nah, whose baby is it? Okay. Oh, yeah, I see. Yeah. I didn't see his face. Okay. I, Sydney, I know. I know. I know, DJ. I know. That baby got some beautiful hair follicles. That's a lot of hair on that baby. I know you like babies. Come on, sit down. <laughs> <laughs> Worship is not the sound I make. It's not the shout I shout. It's not the song I sing. It's the life I live. My life is my worship. My worship is obedience to God out of your love for God. Did you know that? That's the definition. The word worship in Hebrew means to lay prostrate. It means to lay down in the dirt, face in the dirt. It's a proper posture when you know who God is. I don't even deserve to look at you. I came from dust. I came from dirt. And to dirt I shall return. Blessed be the name of the Lord. You want to worship God? Be on time for work this week. You want to worship God? Treat your spouse right. You want to worship God? Be more patient with your children. You want to worship God? Eat better. You want to worship God? Bless somebody else. You want to worship God? Pray for somebody you can't stand. I didn't say call him and pray. You ain't got to like him. 
You ain't even got the car. I just called and let your nasty behind know I'm praying for you today with your stinking self. Don't do that. Last week, I was believing God for miracles, Warren. And I was getting ready to give my offering, and the Lord said, I can't receive this. I haven't told anybody this. I don't know why I'm saying it now. And I was like, why not? He said, because you haven't forgiven some people. And I didn't say who, because I knew who. Because when you've been through the hell I've been through, it's, it's a couple people that I, anyway. He said, you got to release everybody. And it was so strange because it wasn't like a conversation like that. It was in a moment in prayer. And all of a sudden I said, Lord, I forgive everybody who I've held hostage to my anger and my pain. I said, I forgive everybody. I release everybody. They don't have the ability to pay me back for what they did. So I release them. The moment I did that, the weight physically lifted off my body. But also doors started opening up that were crazy. Some of y'all are one release of forgiveness away from everything in your life changing. So here's your choice. Do you hold on to the hatred or do you let it go so you can get this miracle blessing that's literally 10 minutes from right now? They didn't believe me, Aventur. I, by 1245, your life can completely change. You got to forgive because you can't be in a posture of worship with a God you offend every day and then hold on to offense from some other people when he's, he's not holding your stuff against you. Nobody claps on that. You want to be a God to somebody else and hold them hostage, but God hasn't held you hostage to the wrong you and I have done. You want your worship light to go to the next level? Forgive the people that hurt you. And I mean, really forgive them. Don't do black church forgiveness. Well, I forgive, but I sure won't forget. You didn't forgive at all. As far as the east is from the west, I cast your sins and remember them no more. It's the hardest thing in the world to forgive somebody that not only hurts you, but keeps trying to do it and doesn't want to change. And that's exactly why you like your father. God says, I got to forgive you every day, and I know you're going to do it tomorrow. My worship is not the song I sing. I am my worship, my life, my posture, the way I steward my gifts, the way I'm excellent in my craft. This is my worship. Hands lifted. Lord, seal this word. Get the glory from it in Jesus' name. Amen. If you're in this room and you want to be a member of Love Story Church, today is your day. If you want to be a part of what God is doing, if you want to be a part of this church, whether I'm going to go Baptist, you can join by letter, Christian experience, watch care. You and your family need to be a part of what God is doing here. If that's you, meet me at this altar. And baptism is this Wednesday. Baptism is this Wednesday. We could put you in the water this Wednesday. I bet you if you clap, somebody will make a move towards this altar. She's walking. I don't know how she's walking by herself. I got elders right there. There they go. All right. Who else? Anybody else? Anybody else? Oh, here she comes. Y'all need to clap. Here she comes. Come on, ma'am. Welcome home. Is there anybody else? Here she comes, and she's bringing the baby with her. She moving faster than you, elder. You can't even keep up. Is this your baby? What's your baby's name? Ariel. Hi, Ariel. Who else? Somebody else? Come on, sweet lady. Welcome home. Anybody else? Are you coming down? Oh, no, he's going over there. Okay. Don't be walking down the aisle. You're going to get clapped on. 
<laughs> He's like, I just went to the bathroom. Did you wash your hands? Here she comes. I love it. I think a grown man need to make a move to the altar. Men are afraid of commitment. You need to give your life to Jesus and stop playing, sir. Rededicate. Am I talking to you, sir? I want everybody at this altar to know, here he comes, I knew it. He's the first one. I feel like a couple more grown men gonna make a move. You was waiting on one of your brothers to do it. Hey man, stop playing. God wants your life. He wants your heart. He wants your worship. Where you at, my guy? Where you at? There it is, Braylon. There it is. Right here, right here. Here he comes. I knew it, I knew it, I knew. Hey, hey man, welcome home. Who else? Who else? Welcome home. I know those tears are real. You've been carrying a lot in your spirit. You release it at this altar, you hear me? You are not by yourself. You are not forgotten. You are not forgotten. Anybody else coming? Anybody else? Hear me, my mother said this to me when we were believing God for something in Atlanta, Georgia in 2008. We were sitting on a bench outside of Vickery's. I was believing God for my condo. And I didn't have the money to close and I had no hope. But I had packed my bags, I packed. And we were trying to figure out how the Lord was gonna do it. She said, look up at the sky. And we looked up at the sky and there was a hole in the middle of the clouds. And all of a sudden the hole started closing up. She said, there's a small window of opportunity that God's going to give you. She said, step through it. God's gonna make a way. On the day of the closing, I needed $10,000 that I didn't have. And I made one phone call from a no caller ID number and the man on the other end picked up, worked at New Birth at the time. He only picked up because he thought it was somebody else. When he picked up, I said, Hey, this is John Gray. I was just calling because remember the bonus that was promised to me for the conference, I never got it. And he said, can you get to the church? I said, yes. It was for $10,000. But wait, there's more. He made it out to a business. Anybody in here with a business knows you can't cash a business check. You cannot. You got to deposit it. It was a Friday. The closing was Friday at four. It's two o'clock. I gotta show up at the office with a cashier's check that I don't have. I get to the bank. I say, this is drawn on my business, but I need y'all to cash it. They said, sir, there is no policy that we have that will allow this transaction to occur. I said, you don't understand. Go get a manager. Went and got the manager. I said, ma'am, I need to cash this check today. She said, sir, it's a business check. We can't even verify the funds. We would have to call the bank. I said, here's the number to the bank right here. Call them. She said, I can call, but I'm telling you, we're not going to be able to do it. She called, verified the funds. Well, the funds are there, but still it's our policy. I said, I need you to cash this check. I'm not leaving. Somehow she went back there. She was like, I'm going to get fired. I said, you're not going to get fired. Jesus is going to take care of you. Long story short, they cashed it. I walked into the closing with five minutes left with my suit on. Walked in like I had it the whole time, put it on the desk, give my keys. This is not a lie. The next day my, my account was in the negative, but I had a house. 
I'm here to tell somebody that faith moves. I don't care what the policy is. Faith will move a policy. A posture of worship will move a policy. Anzio, tell him to show my picture real quick. I need y'all to see something because you need to know what you stepping into at Love Story Church. Do they have the picture? This is a picture of me after having prayed with some of the men of God at our church. You can't really see it right now because the clouds are behind me. So show them the next photo. You see the dirt on my knees? I got down on my knees and prayed because remember I told you I was believing for some land. And, and I, had a, I had approached it the wrong way and I said, God, we need X amount of money and we need the right thing and maybe the bank. And God said, who are you talking to? Didn't I say wherever you put your feet, wherever you tread upon, it's yours? That's the dirt from the land on my knees. And it was at that moment that I thank God that it belongs to Love Story Church. So the next time I come to talk to you about it, it'll belong to Love Story Church. Not because we had the money, not because we had the relationship, but because I had the faith to believe God. That I had the faith to believe that he is able to do exceeding abundantly above. And while I was talking, somebody else came to the altar because we overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. Everybody here, repeat after me. Lord Jesus, it's me. I confess with my mouth and believe in my heart that Jesus is Lord. Thank you for the blood that was shed for me. I receive the free gift of salvation, not through my works, but the finished work of the cross. The blood is enough to pay for all my sins. Now, Holy Spirit, come live inside and teach me how to be more like Jesus each and every day. You are my Savior and my Lord. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. Can we celebrate our family? I want everybody to turn this way.